This is Liberty Under Attack Radio, hosted by Shane and Matt. Your place for documented truth and where freedom is the only agenda. We must end the terror war. And we are live. Good evening, and welcome to another broadcast of Liberty Under Attack Radio here on the Freedom Phalanx Radio Network. Today is Sunday, August 27th, 2015, and I'm your host, Shane, and I'm joined by uh, my co-host, uh, Stan and Matt. Um, the number to call is 218-895-3818 or on Skype at FPRN Radio Live. Uh, we definitely love to hear from uh, any of our listeners. So, Matt, it's uh, been a few weeks, uh, but it's good to have you back on with us. So how's it going? Uh, thanks, Shane. Uh, it's going pretty good. Good to hear. Good to hear. So uh, um, this past week uh, on Thursday, you had an uh, um, uh, interesting interview that you, uh, you partook in. I want you to tell the listeners a little about that. Okay. The interview was with Frankie Val from Zen Live TV. And here's what I've taken from the experience. Frank wanted my thoughts on the grassroots law being for Article 5 conventions. I wish the reformers good luck because I don't believe their methods will work. The Freedom Umbrella renders reformers' tactics, tactics invalid as far as I'm concerned. Number two, Frank said that he's on board with ANCAPs, but didn't understand how to transition into a fully anarchist environment from where we are now. I'm in the process of finishing an article that answers his questions since we were short on time Thursday. Number three, I plan to come back to Quite Frankly TV, which is his show. There's no set date currently. Number four, uh, rather than seeking to institute a new government once we achieved abolishment, I think sticking with the counter economy leaves the state a demonstrably unnecessary evil. I still stand by my statement that there is a contradiction between the Declaration of Independence and Article 1, Section 8, Clause 15 of the Constitution. It proves the hypocrisy of the Federalists in, in forming their government in early America. Lastly, my newest article is titled Anarchist Axioms Against Electioneering and elaborates on my experiences, experience taken from Thursday with more extensive answers to some of Frank's questions. Okay, awesome. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'll be honest with you, man. Uh, Frank kind of took over the interview a little bit and uh, really didn't let you say a whole lot. Um, I was a little bit annoyed. Uh, it's the minarchist points he was making. Um, they're pretty easy to rebuke, and also the transition period. I mean, that was my main concern um, before I, I called myself a voluntarist or an anarchist, um, was the transition period. Um, so I definitely understand where he's coming from, but I also think there's, um, there's also a lack of understanding of voluntarism and anarcho-capitalism in general. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I do agree with you on the, on the fact that uh, getting to uh, this... Uh, consensual and voluntary society is, is by way of the freedom umbrella. Um, so that needs to get out even further um, to uh, folks. And since we mentioned, it's tinyurl.com forward slash freedom umbrella. Um, so definitely go check it out. Share that around. Uh, anytime uh, one of your status friends says, well, if I don't vote, then what can I do? Well, you send them the freedom umbrella. Well, and what would we do without politicians? <laughs> Exactly, exactly. So yeah, get that freedom umbrella out there. There's probably 30 things. That's just the first edition, too. There's 30 things that you can do and uh, on that list. So Yes, Kyle Rudder and myself are working on the second edition, so that'll be coming out eventually. Awesome. There's endless options, guys. There's no need to fall back on reformist tactics that have, uh, have, have failed miserably all throughout history. And I can tell you one thing. Voting has never set anyone free, so uh, let's uh, get away from those... Uh, Get away from those tactics once and for all and actually work to build a free society. Uh, final note on um, the interview of Thursday. I think the shortage of time was really the only thing that was really holding me back. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And that's why I, I, I think it'd be good for you to go on there again and to, to kind of flesh those, flesh those things out a little bit. Because, I mean, yeah, I mean, he is a minarchist. But uh, nonetheless, I think the main issue, like I, like, like I said, I think the main issue with him is the transition period. Mm -hmm. So... Um, well, I definitely intend to answer that in my article, so it will be awesome. available as soon as possible. So, good deal, good deal. And Stan, it's uh, good to have you back on with me. It's always a pleasure. How are you doing this evening? Doing good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good, man. Doing pretty good. Happy to be here with uh, with all of you gentlemen this evening. So, um, I also think uh, that uh, LUA is covered by a certain license. So, would you mind informing the listeners on what that is? Oh, yes. A Liberty Attack Radio is now licensed under a BitCop no-go of 
license, which this allows reuse of any ex any uh, reuse by anyone except for governments and their agents. Learn more at bitcot.gov. That's b i p c o t dot org. All right, that is correct. Thank you, Stan. Uh, Liberty Intertech is covered under a Bipcot, no government license. And uh, we didn't explain this the first time, which I'm not quite sure why, but for those of you wondering what Bipcot stands for, uh, Beast Lick Internet Policy Commission Outreach Team. And uh, now that you know what that stands for, you're probably interested in knowing what that actually means. Uh, well, obviously, the only term necessary in defining is Beast Lick. And from the uh, Bipcot.org Frequently Asked Questions page, uh, quote, Michael coined the term Beast Lick Wyoming, for where he lives. It's the Mountain West version of bumfuck Egypt, end quote. So now you have an idea of uh, a little bit more about that. Um, but uh, let's uh, move forward here. So uh, Stan, Matt, there's one thing I want to discuss before we move forward. Uh, I saw this day and I had to throw it in the broadcast. And uh, I'm going to read a bit of this, um, but I definitely like your responses. And uh, Matt, since your blog is stationed on Tumblr, uh, you're going to love this. <laughs> so this is uh, from Breitbart. <laughs> uh, it's, the author is uh, Milo Yiannopoulos. I think that's she pronounced it, I don't know. Uh, the UN wants to censor the entire internet to save feminist feelings. So, quote, in a report released yesterday entitled Cyber Violence Against Women and Girls, a Global Wake-Up Call, UN Women, the group la behind last year's Riz Risible, Risible he, or she, he for She campaign, called on governments to use their licensing prerogative to ensure that telecoms and search en engines are only allowed to connect with the public if they supervise content in its dissemination. In other words, if search engines and ISPs don't comply with a list of the UN censorship demands, the UN wants national governments to cut off their access to the public. So what sort of content does the UN want to censor? ISIS recruitment videos, perhaps, which lure women into lives of rape and servitude? Live stream executions from Syria? Revenge porn or snuff videos? There's no shortage of dangerous and potentially traumatizing content on the web. After all, much of it is disproportionately affecting women. Alas not, the UN is hung up on cyber violence against women, a Kafka-esque term that is apparently shorthand for women being criticized on the internet. At least that's how at least two attendees at the launch of the UN report published by the United Nations Broadband Commission explained yesterday. According to feminist culture critic Anita Sharkeesian, who spoke at the event, online harassment doesn't simply consist of what is legal and illegal, but also the day-to-day -day grind of you're a liar and you suck, including all of these hate videos that attack us on a regular basis. Unable to prove that they are victims of a wave of misogynistic hate, no bomb threat against a feminist critic of video games has ever been deemed credible, and there are serious doubts about threats supposedly leveled at transsexual activist Brianna Wu. Feminists are trying to redefine violence and harassment to include disobliging tweets and criticisms of their work. So I'll stop there. I think you guys can already see kind of the absurdity that we're kind of looking at. Mm -hmm. uh, but not only, yeah. I mean, we, we've, we've talked about this before, especially last week with Louis, with Louis B., um, a, a former member of We Are Change, uh, podcast host of uh, Crotch Shot Radio. But we discussed the, that these uh, feminazis, these social justice warriors, love to um, um, go beg the government um, to uh, shove their agendas down people's throats. Uh, but now they're going global. And they're begging the United Nations to censor speech around the world, uh, cultural mm -hmm. Marxism. Uh, so what are your guys' thoughts on that, uh, on that article? You know, it's more of this, oh, it's okay to censor people as long as it's, you know, we use the excuse of it's for the feels. It's, you know, so we don't hurt, you know, group X's uh, feelings or group Y's feelings, whatever you might want to say. I mean, basically... It's the internet. No one cares about your feelings. That is true. It's very true. <laughs> you know, it's, I'm sorry, but, you know, it's in true life. I mean, I have heard a critic of American culture, and we always have the tendency of asking people, how are you? But the truth is, we don't really give a shit how you are today. We're just, <laughs> we're just being courte courteous. Yeah, yeah it reminds I me mean, of a meme I shared today. It uh, uh, says, Bill is on the internet. Bill sees something that offends him. Bill moves on. Bill is <laughs> Be like Bill. Just, it, it went perfectly with that. Because, yeah, I mean, yeah. these people just don't, these people are just, little, these uh, feminists are just a little butthurt. But, uh, um, yeah, Matt, any thoughts on that before we move forward? Yeah. Um, reminds me of when we were covering the FCC, um, recategorizing the internet, for one thing. That was definitely dangerous. Yeah. And, 
Number two, I definitely consider this a form of information warfare by the feminist movement. Yeah, yeah, and I mean it's uh, it's definitely dangerous. They have no qualms. I mean that's pretty much their their main uh, their main um, their main path is to use the violence of the state to get what they want. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's 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 not a, it's, it's kind of dangerous. But uh, let's move forward here. Um, so uh, we do have uh, quite a bit uh, to get through this evening. Um, in the first hour of tonight's show, we'll be talking with uh, Nick Hazelton, the 17-year-old host of the Anarcho Yakitalist podcast. Uh, since I heard about this kid from Lou Fien last month, I've been anxiously awaiting uh, an interview with him. And uh, tonight's the night. I think my audio cut out. Um, are you guys still there? I can hear you. Okay, okay, good deal. Yeah. All right, thank you. Because uh, for some reason the audio cut out. I just want to make sure I wasn't DC'd or something. Okay, all right, well, we'll continue. So, uh, um, yeah, we're going to be joined by Nick Hazelton uh, here in just a moment. Uh, in the second hour, we'll be discussing uh, Charles Dyer, another political prisoner. I've had some interesting experiences uh, with his current girlfriend and his mother, and it will be a live expose of sorts. Uh, it did not end well, and it finally seems like there's a, a conclusion to the story and uh, not a good one. It looks like uh, Mr. Dyer is going to be in prison for 30 years. Um, but we'll definitely get to that more here in the second hour. Uh, but as always, uh, there are some updates. Uh, here at LUA, we constantly produce quality original content, and this week is no exception. As I'm sure most of you have seen, the federal government is facing another shutdown due to the halting of the funding of Planned Parenthood. Uh, this topic motivated me to write an article titled Outrage from the Left, the Defense of the Immoral, Inhumane Planned Parenthood. Within, I touch on some questionable, questionable quotations by Margaret Sanger, uh, the history of Planned Parenthood and eugenics in America, as well as a non-governmental economic means solutions to this issue that everyone seems to be up in arms about. In uh, my research of that subject, I found the actual source for a quote that has been propagated throughout the alternative media. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure most of you have heard of uh, Sanger's desire to exterminate the Negroes, uh, but in my recent YouTube video, in my most recent YouTube video, I provide actual proof rather than uh, speculation. Uh, the roots of uh, Planned Parenthood are tainted, and to see this organization defunded is uh, not necessarily a sob story for me. I'm sure they have plenty of money. Um, <laughs> I'm sure they have plenty of money, so it's not really going to affect them too much. Uh, but I prefer a market solution, and I'm not proud of uh, government involvement in general, but it's truly hilarious to watch the fal false dichotic left and right fight once again over a football issue rather than actually caring about freedom. I also wrote an article titled, American Hypocrisy, the Constant Violation of Title IV Flag Code. Uh, within this article, I discuss the mass civil disobedience being performed by a majority of Americans without them even realizing it. Do you own a piece of apparel with an American flag printed on it? Have you ever seen the flag draped upon the hood or side of a car? Have you ever seen the three percenter flag? All of those law-abiding, tax-paying citizens would be facing a hundred dollar fine and or thirty days in jail if Title IV was enforced. I am all for a conscious violation of the law, especially by way of agorism, but in this article I point out the hypocrisy of the statist American public and the Patriot movement. I also released the article discussing my interactions with the Charles Dyer supporters, which is titled Stonewall, There is No Hope for Charles Dyer. As I mentioned, uh, we'll get to that in the second hour. And you can find all those articles and videos at libertyunderattack.com or via the YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com forward slash libertyunderattack. Also, for those who are unaware, Liberty Under Attack Radio is now available on Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, and iTunes. If you miss a broadcast, you can now catch up via the aforementioned dumb phone apps. Additionally, uh, in the upcoming months, we could surely use your support. Uh, come January, our goal is to expand the broadcast into two nights a week, and uh, we are committed in achieving that goal. Advertise or sponsor this broadcast, share our various social media links uh, with your friends and family, or if you're feeling extra generous, uh, we'd love your uh, monetary assistance. Uh, we accept Bitcoin, and you can also uh, donate via PayPal. Uh, if you're interested in assisting us, uh, visit libertyunderattack.com for more information, or send me an email, shane at libertyunderattack.com. Or, I mean, even better, we just started this broadcast. Feel free to share the link, the link to the FPR and Listen Live page across your uh, social media pages now. Uh, we definitely appreciate uh, more listeners um, to hear uh, what we've got planned for this evening. Um, so, Stan, uh, Matt, did I miss anything? Because that's all I have. I think that's everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so okay. All right. All right. Awesome. Well, let's get into the meat and potatoes of this broadcast. Uh, so, Mr. Nick Hazelton, I want to welcome you to uh, Liberty Under Attack Radio. It's a pleasure to have you on and be speaking with you. Uh, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing great. I'm really happy to be here. Thank you. Oh, not a problem. Not a problem. I, I mean, uh, it's, it's truly amazing to see someone as young as you taking interest in philosophy and anarchism.